everybody. Thanks for joining me today, Dr. Ross Marcagiani, with another great conversation at Turnpaw Health and Wellness Center. Today we're going to be talking about fat absorption. Mainly we're going to be talking about some gallbladder dysfunction and how that relates to fat uh, absorption. We're going to be talking about what does the gallbladder do. We'll be talking about what are gallstones, what signs should I look for if I, have, if I think I have gallstones, um, who should be aware of gallstones, and how do we combat and prevent this formation of gallstones. Let's dive in. So first, we need to understand what's going on uh, with the gallbladder. What does the gallbladder do? So the gallbladder's main job is to store bile that's created by the liver. So really important understanding the liver is the main production of bile. And then bile is then used either when we uh, consume food, it's released uh, through an enzymatic process to help break down, absorb, and absorb fats. Uh, but sometimes we have excess bile and then that will be diverted and stored into the gallbladder for when the next meal is consumed and we need to release the, uh, the bile from the gallbladder. Bile is made up of, um, mainly it's made up of bile salts, which is bile salts itself is made up of uh, glycine and taurine and some cholesterol. Uh, bile is made up of cholesterol as well, lecithin, bilirubin, and water. And then a couple other, uh, a couple other aspects that are much, much less. Uh, bile helps, like we talked about, aids in the digestion and absorption of fats. So it really helps in the digestion fact is that it helps to mycelize or basically break down the fatty acid chains into smaller, shorter chains. So now that lipase, which is an enzyme specifically for, for fatty acids, can go and break down the absorption, uh, break down the, the molecules even more effectively and absorb them. It also is helpful for removing waste. So it's helpful for binding excess cholesterol and excess bilirubin. Bilirubin is made through the, uh, the hematocrit or when the red blood cells lyse, um, it's the byproduct of that process of making, uh, getting rid of old red blood cells and making new red blood cells. The, one of the byproducts is bilirubin and um, bile salts and biles help to bind that and remove that. As you can see here, there's CCK on here. So there's really two important um, enzymes that help to release of bile from the gallbladder, the main one being CCK, cholecystokinin. This again is released in response to when food is in the stomach and we're starting to um, have this enzymatic process. The pH of the stomach will stimulate the pancreas to release this enzyme CCK, which will then stimulate the gallbladder to contract and release bile. Also another factor is secretin. Secretin helps to stimulate the gallbladder, not as much as CCK, um, but it does have some influence there as well. So what are gallstones? When we're talking about the gallbladder, um, also we mentioned the liver, how important that is for fat, um, fat breakdown and fat absorption because again, bile is released directly from the liver um, and made in the liver. But when we talk about gallstones, um, they can uh, preci precipitate or form in a couple places or more commonly known get stuck in a couple places. So typically what is a gallstone first though? Gallstone is basically what happens is when we have uh, chronic inflammation, um, the absorptive effect of the gallbladder mucus basically decreases. So what happens when we have this inflammation in the gallbladder, it will precipitate out basically leak out cholesterol and leave cholesterol behind. And so then it will carry the bile salt and it will carry the lecithin and it will carry the water into the digestive tract, but leave that cholesterol precipitate behind. And then that will form a crystal and then form the gallstone. Typically a cholesterol gallstone is what uh, it's known for. Uh, we can have various types of, of gallstones as well, or stones in general, such as uh, another one, another big one being a calcium stone. Uh, so that's the main important of the, the gallstone and how that forms. What can happen here is a couple things. We can have something called acute or chronic 
uh, cholestitis. It basically just means inflamed gallbladder and there's stones in the actual gallbladder. Uh, typically what I want you to be aware of if it's acute is if you have a high fever, nausea, vomiting, pain that does not change with position. Uh, you notice that after a meal, the, the pain lasts you know, several, several hours to days. Uh, you want to be concerned right away, get yourself to a hospital, have a, uh, a, a gallbladder ultrasound, um, and that would be the correct method to go if you have those following symptoms. Also, if you have, you can do this on your own, um, a positive Murphy sign, which would be placing the fingers under the rib cage on the right side. So if you trace along your rib cage, you go up towards the xiphoid process, which is kind of the very bottom of your sternum, and you start, you know, kind of digging your fingers underneath that rib cage. That's more or less essentially a Murphy's uh, inspiratory arrest sign. There's more details to it, but that gives you a very, very cursory overview. Um, and if it's really bad, just taking a deep breath in will create almost that same positive sign you would get on a Murphy sign. So if that's um, painful, then you want to make sure you get uh, assessed right away. Some other some other symptoms that we could notice may be um, if your so if you have middle of the back or upper right shoulder pain, that's a common sign with uh, with gallstones. Um, just to be clear here, though, ninety percent of the gallstone of uh, ninety percent of gallstones do not cause symptoms. So. Uh, you could most likely have a gallstone and not experience any of these symptoms. Um, and it also may take up to eight years to even develop these symptoms. So that's something to be aware of. So some early signs of maybe you have a, a, a chronic cholestitis uh, or you have some gallstones you're not aware of. Um, early signs, sugar cravings, gas, bloating, unable to tolerate fats after meals. So you notice you're not digesting fats well. Uh, something called steatorrhea, which means we're having pale stools, we're, um, we're having undigested food particles, the, the food is starting to, the stool is starting to float. You notice you may have pale skin. If you're starting to get jaundice, meaning you're having, you'll first notice around the, the whites of your eye, some yellowing, that's when you wanna be concerned as well. Um, that's something where we could have uh, lithiasis basically just means it's a big word that means you now have a stone that's in your common bile duct so you uh, basically it's where the gallbladder and the liver uh, the the they meet together as far as the tubing uh, meets together and more commonly known as the common bile duct is where that stone would get lodged um, so just be aware of that those are some things to be concerned about we already talked about here um, that you know biliary colic, which is just um, you know it's just pain or discomfort that lasts several days. That's something you want to be aware of. But sometimes we can, in the the more chronic, the less acute, can have biliary col uh, colic that resolves within about an hour to several hours, and, and it kind of dissipates. Um, some later signs we want to be aware of is the headaches pain but like we talked about between the shoulder blades the upper right shoulder pain and discomfort again with a high fatty meal uh, after eating we talked about those positive signs that we want to go in and get uh, assessment right away if you have again have that murphy sign uh, vomiting that uh, constant pain uh, fever sweating that's something that you want to be aware of so who should be concerned so just to be aware, roughly 20 uh, million Americans have gallstones and only about one to three percent of that actually actually exhibit symptoms. So just be aware, um, you know, you may have gallstones and again, might not exhibit symptoms. Uh, people who should be aware, women who are at increased risk because of excessive estrogen. Estrogen helps to, uh, to basically pull estrogen from the blood and then from that, it can divert that cholesterol to the gallbladder. Uh, depositing more uh, more cholesterol in the the gallbladder uh, also we want to be aware of diabetics again inflammation driving gallbladder affects the gallbladder mucosa in the absorption so diabetics who are uh, 
chronically inflamed. Uh, rapid weight loss. Since we have rapid weight loss, we have uh, increased circulation of cholesterol and the liver needs to process more cholesterol, again, which can, which can get deposited into the gallbladder. Uh, also, patients who have uh, low uh, hypo, uh, high density lipoprotein and have high triglycerides. Basically, uh, it's been shown that eight, uh, low HDL uh, causes higher levels of cholesterol and high triglycerides is associated with high cholesterol. Again, the more likeliness of creating that cholesterol gallstone. So how do we combat this issue? So consumption in a high fish oils is effective because fish oils has, has seemed to increase that HDL and decrease our overall cholesterol. Uh, a diet high in nuts and seeds, uh, high in fruits and vegetables, and most importantly, high in fiber has been really effective to showing re reduction uh, or the prevention of gallstones. Also supplementing with lecithin, which uh, is a component of the bile salts, so to help to make the bile salts and help uh, fatty acid uh, breakdown. Uh, avoiding sugar consumption, again, inflammation. Uh, consuming uh, vitamin C around two grams for two weeks has shown some reduction in um, in gallbladder symptoms. Uh, coffee, uh, the use of coffee, there's a study done for over 10 years, a retrospective study that tracked men for 10 years and found that uh, men who drank coffee had a 40% reduction in, uh, in gallstone symptoms or gallstone, uh, actual gallstone formation. Uh, so possibly could play around with the idea of coffee enemas as well, which will actually stimulate um, hepatic function and uh, stimulate uh, the detoxification. Um, assessing if your iron deficiency or hypochondria have been connection, made connections with gall, uh, creating gallstone formation. So getting blood work done to see if you're iron deficient and making sure uh, we have good acid formation. Because remember the acid helps to release CCK and it helps to release uh, secretin, which all uh, stimulates the contraction of that gallbladder. And then making sure we're getting good digestive enzymes, make sure the liver is working effectively and efficiently so it can produce the bile to help break down digestion. Um, and that following those there is gonna be able, are, are going to be able to help uh, significantly. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. My main goal is to be able to give you information to make informed decisions on your health. I hope you found this beneficial. And if you know anyone that, can share, that you can share this with, please uh, feel free to share this information. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.